a function of the form f of x equals a n x to the n plus a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 and then the next term would be plus a n minus 2 x to the power of n minus 2 this pattern continues all the way down to a1 x to the first and then a0 x to the zero. This is such that a n, a n minus one, all the way down to a1 and a0, all of those are real numbers and n is a non-negative integer. We call this type of function a polynomial function of degree n. Notice n is the largest power of the independent variable x. So therefore, the largest power of the independent variable here is n, and that's why it is the degree of this polynomial. Once you've identified the term that gives the polynomial its degree, that term has a special name. That term, a n x to the n, is called the leading term of the polynomial, and the real number a n is called the leading coefficient. And the leading coefficient is helpful in telling us the shape of the graph of the polynomial. For instance, if the leading coefficient is positive, greater than zero, and n, the degree, is odd, then as x approaches infinity, or as x gets really, really large, as x goes in this direction, after you get through all these little hills and valleys of the polynomial, eventually, y will start to approach infinity also. And also, as x goes to negative infinity, y is also going to go to negative infinity. So the end behaviors we would say for this would be as x gets small, y gets small. As x gets large, y gets large. In another case, if we have a negative leading coefficient but n is still odd, in that case as x approaches infinity or as x gets really large, y is actually going to approach negative infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity or gets really, really small, y is going to approach positive infinity. y is going to get really, really large. Next scenario would be if we have a positive leading coefficient, but n is now even. In this case, as x gets really, really large, or as x goes to infinity, y, or f of x, is also going to approach infinity. y is also going to get really large. But as x gets really small, as x approaches negative infinity, y is actually still going to get really large. y is going to approach positive infinity. And lastly, if the leading coefficient is negative and n is even, then as x approaches infinity or as x gets really large, y is going to get really small. y is going to approach negative infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity or as x gets really, really small, y is also going to approach negative infinity, y is also going to get small. Here's a summary of that. This is actually called the leading coefficient test. It says if n is odd and you have a positive leading coefficient, then the n behaviors look like this after you go through all the peaks and valleys of the polynomial. And it says if n is odd and you have a negative leading coefficient, then the n behaviors look like this. If n is even and you have a positive leading coefficient, then this is the n behavior. And if n is even and you have a negative leading coefficient, then this is the n behavior. So these are just the n behaviors summarized. And we can take on problems like this one. Given this function, f of x equals negative 5x squared times x plus 1 times x minus 3, Express the function as a polynomial in general form and determine the leading term, the degree, and the end behaviors of the function. So let's go ahead and do that. First, let's put it in general form by multiplying it all out. First, I'll foil these two binomials, which gives me this trinomial. And then I'll distribute the negative 5x squared to each term in the trinomial. Since it's in general form, which is the first thing they asked me to do, put it in general form. So check. Now I can determine the leading term. Well, of these exponents of x, 2, 3, and 4, the largest one is 4, so that's going to be the degree of this polynomial. So therefore, the leading term is the term that has that degree. Since I see the degree of the leading term is 4, 
That means that the degree of the entire polynomial is 4. So the degree of the leading term is the degree of the entire polynomial. And now I'll take a look at the end behaviors because I see that the degree is even. So I know I'm in this column with even degree. And I see that the leading coefficient is a negative 5. So since I have a negative leading coefficient, which is the bottom row, and an even degree, which is the second column, this would be the end behavior for my graph. So because the degree is even and the leading coefficient is negative, you can choose these end behaviors. Let's talk about turning points. A turning point is a point on a graph where the graph changes from increasing to decreasing, rising to falling, or from decreasing to increasing, falling to rising. A polynomial of degree n will have at most n minus 1 turning points. So if you take a look at the graph here, this graph goes from increasing or rising to decreasing or falling at that point right there that has an x value of c1. It also goes from decreasing on the left here to increasing on the right at that second value, C2. Then it goes from increasing to decreasing at that value, C3. And then it goes from decreasing to increasing at that value, C4. So it seems to me as though this polynomial function has four turning points where it either changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. Those are the turning points right there. The graph shown has four turning points and therefore the polynomial has a minimum degree of 5 because a polynomial of degree n, which in this case would be 5, will have at most 5 minus 1 or 4 turning points. So if you know the number of turning points, exactly one more than that is the minimum degree of the polynomial. Determine the maximum number of turning points of this polynomial. So when I take a look, the degree of this polynomial is the degree of the highest term. And in this case, this polynomial has degree 8. So this is the leading term of the polynomial. And I see here that the degree is 8. Therefore, the maximum number of turning points is 8 minus 1 or 7. All right, so that's how the turning points work.